Hi, a very warm welcome to Dusty Shelf Collectibles. Today we're reviewing two kits from Tamiya of the Tyrrell P34. Yeah, hi. So um, you may have seen my, I did a video a couple of weeks back um, of the Porsche Jägermeister um, from Tamiya in two different scales. Uh, the sort of pretense of that video was to see if, you know, what the difference between the two kits were and which one you should go for. And I, I quite enjoyed doing that video, so um, I thought I'd do another one. Um, <laughs> um, so what I've got here are two kits from Tamiya, um, both of the Tyrrell P34, the legendary six-wheeler. Um, we've got one here which is the 120th version um, and then this one here which is uh, the 112th. So um, Tamiya also do a 110th version which is an RC kit, only going to stick to the, the sort of uh, conventional model kits this time around though. So um, let's just deal with this one first. So the 112th kit, um, this was originally um, released in 1977. Um, there's been many, many releases of this over the years. This one was released last year in 2022, so it's a fairly new kit. Um, quite expensive, so you know we'll have a good look over this. Um, and then this one, which is the 120th, um, again originally released in about 1977, and this kit dates from 2010. Now, I am going to go along the same sort of pretenses for the Porsche video, in the fact that there's roughly about well, getting on for a hundred quid between these kits, not quite as much as the Porsche. Uh, this one retails, I think, about 120, 130. This one, 30 to 40 pounds. So it's not quite as big a price gap, but it's still quite a sizable gap in there. Um, both kits are coming with um, photo etched parts. Um, if the conclusion I drew on the Porsche kit is basically the Porsche, the smaller kit didn't have enough parts in it and I didn't think it was value for money. The larger kit was far too detailed and complex and I wondered who it was being aimed at. It's definitely worth the money, the larger kit. So couldn't do the same sort of comparison between these two kits. So I'm going to take them over to the bench. We'll review each box, each contents, and then for what it's worth, I'll lay the parts out side by side like I did before and try and draw some conclusions. Um, but I hope it's of interest to somebody. Um, I plan on building both of these. I love the concept of this Tyrrell uh, with the small wheels. Um, the uh, This came about in 1976. So there was a ruling that um, basically set the size of the front wing. And the problem was with the conventional wheels, when, you put, put, when they put them in, they sat over the top of the front wing. Um, so you got an, uh, quite a lot of drag there. So Tyrrell came up with the concept that if they went for two smaller wheels, and both of these steered, um, you could duck them down behind the rear wing, reduce the drag, but also then get double the contact for uh, friction onto the uh, onto the track. Um, lasted about a season. All the other teams were beginning to develop six-wheelers for the following season. And uh, towards the end of the season, the rules changed, and they eventually this got dropped. So... Um, yeah um it became a bit of a legend and um thankfully now there is one or two of these still running uh that do the sort of uh, goodwood circuit and things but um yeah let's go over to the bench and let's have a review of what's in these boxes yes let's go through the 120th so you can see here the 120th on there um 1976 japanese grand prix this is from so it's the 76 season that this um this came to into into being um Designed by Derek Gardner, who was the tool chief designer at the time, came up with this concept. And as you can see, I was mentioning about the front wing. You see the wheels are sort of tucked down behind, so you get double the surface patch and also no drag from them. So, um, But both of these wheels, they were four-wheel steer as well. Um, obviously had its drawbacks in pit stops and things because you're changing six wheels instead of two. But um, by the end of the 77 season, they'd changed the rules and basically said that Formula One cars from then on would have four and only four wheels um you know effectively banning this um something i did read about this car is um it was avon that agreed to manufacture tires which brought it back into sort of the historic racing um and uh, i've certainly seen this running up the hill at goodwood um and it, fantastic sight i mean to have a have a such a legendary car actually running is fantastic but anyway back to the kits so 120th um on the front of the box um just going through ready to assemble precision model kit 
um, age 14 and above, not a toy, much the same as the Porsche. Cement and glue not included, cement and paint not included. Um, nice box art, um, nothing particularly special. Um, then on the end, just again, just giving the details, and the same on this end. Emphasis on the photo etch parts on the side. We get um, basically a schematic of the etch parts and details such as complex rear wing support structure and oil tank also reproduction, reproduced, sorry. So that's there. And then on the other side of the box, gives you sort of a schematic of the car in its different uh, orientations. Um, paint wise, TS15 blue, T X10, which is gun metal, and X18 semi-gloss black, and then XF16, which is a flat aluminium. And just to point out, it's a licensed product from Tyrrell, from Tyrrell Racing. So, let's open up the box and have a look what we've got in here. So, um, now unlike the Porsche, this is the first time I've actually opened these boxes, so this is all new to me. So, um, right, we've got some hoses and two rear tires there Just a couple of sprues and some the front tires a couple more sprues in there and some chrome parts sprue there with the engine uh, we have a driver um, in here we've got some decals so we've got belts and various decals there. Have a look at those in a minute. Photo etch parts. Oh, a really good selection. A really big, big sheet of uh, photo etch parts. That's good to see. That's really good. And um, there is some, there is some painting on here as well. So we'll come back to that as well. Um, then in the bottom of the box, there's your usual warnings. Don't cut yourself and poke yourself in the eye. All the usual things. Then we've got the tips, which. Uh, Come with a lot of Tamiya kits, um, and then the instructions. So, uh, yeah, it talks about uh, yeah Derek Gardner, as I said, Japanese Grand Prix P34, driven by Jody Schnecter. Um, yeah, so um, that's uh, and it had, yeah, and I've forgotten 76. What a year that was! The year with James Hunt and um, Nicky Lauda uh, that uh, they had there their massive uh race you know battle so uh yeah real legendary year, year 76 anyway right so i've dropped all the parts out of the bag so we can have a good look at them um i mean uh, as i said uh, you know gut reaction as i open the packet is or open the box is what a kit this is amazing such good value so um on here we see parts of the body we've well, got the under tray this is your, your seat bucket in here um, molding looks pretty good nothing of uh, nothing to worry about there it all looks very good molding and we've got the body itself um, there are some witness marks where these ribs run on the front there I don't know if the camera's catching that if I get the light on it you may be able to see them um, yeah so I mean if you do want to if you are a perfectionist there will be a little bit of filling required on there um, I'm guessing with this being, you know, a kit from a few years ago, um, it's not quite, you know, there are some blemishes on the, the moulding. Um, so that's those. Uh, we've got a chrome sprue. I'm guessing this is the roll hoop in here. There's very other com various other components in there. Um, looking at the tyres, unlike the Porsche, you can see we've got um, lettering on the side of the tyres. Um, I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but uh, basically Goodyear written on the side walls. So, uh, I mean, if you want to get a good finish on this, pop some paint down on the table, drop that in, and you'll get the, the white marks on the side of the tyre. A um, little bit of a flash line down the middle like we've had before, but uh, that nothing that uh, a knife won't take off and clean those up nicely. So that's the two rear tyres. Front tyres, again, we've got Goodyear written on the side walls, so they can, you know, again, with some paint touch those down on it they'll get a lovely finish and there's other little bits of bushes and things i don't know what they're for um we've got some detailing packs with some wire a little bit of hosing there 
um, and there's a couple of screws and things in the bags. And then onto the sprues, we got our front wheels on this sprue, various suspension components and brake brake components. This is going to look fantastic when it goes together. And already, just look at the amount of parts on here. I feel that um, you know, whereas the Porsche, the smaller of the Porsche kits, you're going to put it together in a few hours. This if you take your time over it you, this is spread over a few evenings and you can make a really nice job of it by finishing each one of these components individually so already i'm really pleased with this it's a lovely kit um here we've got obviously the rear wheels um that uh, drop inside um your um, radiator vents there's the top of the engines here look at the detail on it it's fantastic and the molding's really good really good on these steering wheel in there so obviously lots of different components to add to the detail and then on to the engine itself by the look of it yeah we've got um you know the cylinders here see the transaxle very very nice detail really good on the porsche if you remember the the transaxle was molded into the underbody which meant you lost all this side detail all these cooling fins and things and here's the exhaust look multi multi assembly exhaust so really good um comes with a driver if you want to put them in um look at the molding on that it's fantastic absolutely fantastic so that's going to look really good uh let's have a quick look at these decals i don't normally like to take the decals out of the packet but i'm quite intrigued to see what that is. so inside here Right, so inside here we have don't know what these are look so some Goodyear decals um, I wouldn't have thought they're for the side of the tire I don't know don't know let's have a look no it doesn't it doesn't say that they're for the side of the tire so I'm guessing they're probably the ones that go on the rear wing um, then we've got the ELF sponsorship uh, with obviously Jody as Jody checked her on there and the other markings to go on the car. And then here there's some decals to add to the seatbelt to add the detail in. So that's uh, that's quite nice actually, nice touch. So three sets of decals there. And then onto the photo etch. Um, as I say, really. You've got multiple components here for the rear wing. This is all rear wing. You've got um, grills to put on the uh, air coolers or radiators. Got a top of the engine cover. I mean, it looks fantastic. It's, um, yeah, certainly uh, a really, really nice kit. And for the money, full value, absolute full value. Um, can't praise it enough. I think it's a fantastic kit. Right, so let's go through the instructions for the 120th variant. So the important bit on here, I think, to note is the 176 J Japan Grand Prix. So um, the, the information that it gives you here is usually, um, you know, it, it talks about the car. So it, this bit just talks again, mentioning Derek Garner, um, designing the car for Tyrrell, the six wheels, how unique it was, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and then the drivers, as I mentioned when I did the review of the box. But the important thing in here is Formula One race cars often have a race specific modifications and the number three Tyrrell P34 driven by Jody Schechter at the Japanese Grand Prix was distinguished by a triangular net guard fitted on the air funnel and large wingtip panels on the rear wing. The race was a battle for the championship between Ferrari's uh, Niki Lauda and McLaren's James Hunt and drew the great deal of attention both within Japan and around the world. But the bit I want to pick up on is this car, um, or this, this model kit, actually has a variant on the rear wing. So you can see here these massive end plates on the rear wing there. But if I turn it over, there's a B version which has the small wing. So if you want to do the P34 in normal spec, you'd follow the B version. And if you want to do it in the Japanese spec, or the Japan Grand Prix 1976 has this much larger wing on the back. Now this more larger wing with the end plates actually involves a much more complex structure 
um, and you actually get these on the, um, the, the you can see these on the uh, photo etch parts as we mentioned earlier so let's walk through the instructions then so as I say there's some information there on the car won't go too deep into that um, so assembling the engine block there's a nice load of components there bring it together You've got HD leads um, floating round um, that uh, form the detail in this upper part um, heads go on the engine you can see the leads there you've then got assembling the exhaust four manifolds into one um, brake discs I think um, on the Porsche I mentioned on the smaller Porsche kit, the brake discs and the, the hub assemblies all came in one moulding. This you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe six or seven parts each side, which is great. Lots to do there. Transaxle um, on the Porsche kit, on the smaller kit, this was moulded into the body. So you lost all the side detail because the sliders on the torso. This is great that they're separate parts. You can get all the detail in there. Fantastic. Um, then you've got uh, onto number six. You've then got your your drive shafts in here, um, anti roll bars. The engine drops on, all really really nice detail. Moving forward, again more engine components. Number nine, you can see in here, we're now dropping in the roll hoop, which is one of the chromed parts, um, onto the base structure. And again assembly now down onto ten, assembling the rear hubs. Um, 11 again more detail on the rear hubs 12 oh sorry these are the front hubs because obviously you've got your double double wheel on the front and the whole point in this kit so this is on the front of the car dropped into uh, the chassis here uh, you've then got more detail on sort of the the body fitted onto there um, seat belts so actually the the seat belts are you do get photo etch parts for the seat belts on this kit as well, which I didn't realise. So maybe we'll go back and have another look at those. Yeah, so seat belts, I think I mentioned this. Uh, I thought they were just decals, but it does show here. Look, the photo etch parts actually show the seat belts um, are folded parts. So that's really good. Now, I said these were decals, but let me just bring in the photo etch parts again. Yeah, look, on the photo etch parts for this kit, you do get the buckles so these are fully assembled seat belts on the smaller kit which is fantastic um so they will you you, you basically assemble the belts in, in part by part um normally you only see this on the larger kit so that's a really nice detail there so fantastic um then moving over this is where we drop the seat in um you get a man with this um uh, kit so you can choose between the two drivers um, and then your trumpets fitting onto the top of the engine, which is a lovely finish. Then you've got the option of A or B on the rear wing. So following through the Japanese specification with the larger end plates, you've got follow through A. So here, again, on the etch parts, you've got detailing and the end plates are all part of um, building up this assembly for the Japanese specification. And you see on the back of the car, it's going to look fantastic with the all the metal showing. Um, and then failing that, if you want to follow the B spec, which is sort of the standard um, uh, 30 P34 specification wing, you can do that as well, which is following the, the steps on B. Fit your wheels and then your decals as shown. So I'm really blown away. I think that's such a lovely kit. It's fantastic. Looks really, really good. Really good kit and real, you know, more detail than when I first opened the box. So. Um, yeah, compared with the Porsche that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago where I was just completely underwhelmed by the simplicity of the kit. The moulding was good, but the kit was so simple. Um, this one I'm really impressed with. So, uh, yeah, at the moment, really recommending that. It's really good value, lots of detail. And to put in that many photo etch parts is, um, yeah, really good. And the option on the wing, which is fantastic. Yeah, so this is the larger of the two. This is the 112th Tyrrell P34. Um, box art's very similar. In fact, it's identical. If I just bring this one in, you can see it's identical to the smaller variant. Um, part of the big scale series, it says up here, um, aluminium air funnels and photo etch parts included. I hope you can see that because the uh, my lights are not very good in here. They do reflect off of things. Uh, down the bottom here, it says length 336 millimetres. 
so roughly about that long width 166 um, and height 84 uh, it says detailed static display model aluminium air funnels front four wheels linked with steering wheel move via rack and pinion steering system so it's got working steering Cow can be cows can be removed after assembly so you can see your engine uh, features an authentic rendering of the engine with uh, fuel pipes, ignition cables, uh, includes photo etch parts to depict wing end plates, brake disc, radiator and seatbelt buckle parts. Um, in the small print here, detailed assembled precision model, the usual, uh, detailed 14 and above, this is not a toy, um, may differ from the box art and you need cement and paint as normal. Um, on the sides... I'll try and get this in the picture. We've got a side view of the car. And then it says here some about the car. About the, I'll read this out, actually. Tyrrell P34 was unveiled, unveiled in September 1975 as the world's first six-wheeler Formula One car. The P34 featured uh, four wheels at the front and two wheels at the rear in an effort to reduce air resistance and improve handling and braking performance. This car made its debut at the Spanish Grand Prix in May 1976, driven by De Felier. Uh, in June of the same year, Jody Schechter and De Felier achieved a 1-2 finish at the season's 7th race at Swedish Grand Prix, proving the groundbreaking design was competitive. The car also got third place uh, in the Constructors' Championships and earned its place in history, but was banned very shortly after, so there you go. <laughs> As I say, a very iconic car, um, and certainly one of my... You know, one of my most, in, one of the most intriguing, I guess, Formula One cars. One of my favourites. You know, I, I do, uh, um, yeah, it's, it, I, I find it very interesting. Um, so, Tyrrell, good wear, licensed products, much the same as the smaller kit, what you'd expect. Um, I won't show the end of the boxes. I don't know whether you can see this here. It's not coming on the camera. Can't get it round. And then on the other side, um, again, some uh, schematics of the car in different, different orientations. Uh, shows your um, for air funnel parts and your etching there um, and it gives some colours but it only actually gives three colours, you're going to need a lot more than that so on the box it's the TS15 blue the X18 semi-gloss black and the XF16 which is the flat aluminium so with that said, let's get inside the kit now as with the smaller one this uh, I haven't actually opened this box so I, I have no idea what's inside so this is all going to be new so lift the lid off and wow, um, so first thing, yeah, obviously how it's presented. So we have here, obviously your photo etching, which is um, which is painted. You can see various areas, and I guess these are the funnels that uh, the little air intake trumpets for the engine, and that's sitting on a sort of a a nice cardboard presentation pack that sits over the top of the rest of the uh, packet. So let's pop that to one side. So going through these very quickly, we've got um, a, a, a chrome sprue here with the, obviously I guess this is some sort of roll hoop. Um, you've got brake discs on here, various other bits. And we've got a couple of sprues, um, various detailing in the wheels and the engine wishbones in there. Uh, more linkage bars and wishbones anti roll bar in there side pods by the look of it and various bits of underbody we've got more screws here with lots of detail and then parts of the engine um, monocoque part of the tub there um, and again more sprues. I'll get all these out in a minute and we'll have a detailed look through. And a nice big pack of wheels with some bits and pieces inside. Um, then we've got decals. I'm guessing these are the Goodyear ones and we've got fabric belts there. Um, instructions. We'll go through those in a moment. And then the same text tips and don't cut yourself, don't stab yourself in the eye, all the usual on the base there. So, I'll just uh, pause for a moment while I undo these bags and then let's go through the kit in some detail. Now, as we saw with the uh, the port larger Porsche kit, with these big series in the back of the kits, much the same as the uh, sort of um, radio control models that Tamiya do, you do get a parts list. 
Um, so I'm going to follow this through because um, it does. It just makes it a little bit more ordered, a little bit, a little bit more structured. So starting with parts, A parts, which are these. Um, generally looking over them, they're pretty good. There are. I am seeing sink marks in them though again, um, which we saw in the other in the other kit. Not sure if that's just a, a weld line in the plastic or there is actually a sink on there. But um, yeah, there's definitely definitely dips on across the front of this um, that you may want to take out with a little bit of filler depending on the finish that you're looking for. Don't know whether the light's catching that or not, but um, yeah, there's definitely some undulations along the front there, which is a shame. Um, otherwise, the parts are really not bad at all. Um, so obviously these are these are, I guess these are parts of the cowl and the side structure. This is obviously the, the, the very front of the model. That's why this is so so critical. But definitely there is a witness mark all the way through there. So you are going to be painting this, whatever, you know, if you want to get a decent finish. So that's the A parts. Moving on to the B parts. Again, you can see through here, I don't know whether that's showing up on the camera, the wash through line of the flow of the plastic. It's very, very clear and sink marks where these bosses very very clear on the plastic so if this part is visible there's a little bit of work to be done filling those in and painting them up don't know whether this will actually be underneath the uh, the bodywork and you'll never see this part but if you want to be you know if you do want this bit on show there's a, i'm hoping that the lights if i move it you may see the light catching on the where the bosses are you get the sink in the plastic um shouldn't be too much to just fill those over um get rid of the blemishes there but otherwise in the sort of bucket where the the seat would sit it looks fantastic you know you've got all the rivets in here very nicely detailed so that's that part that's there and then the floor pan i mean this is underneath the car and you can see the kind of detail you're getting through here all these rivets but again you know and see flow lines in the plastic so you will be painting these you, you know, it'd be a shame to just put that on. I'm hoping the camera's picking this up, but basically there's a line through here, there's one through here, one down there, one off to that side, and it runs through here. Um, and it's on the other side. So it's obviously where it's been, you know, that looks like the lead, the flow point, and where the flow's coming, it's it's filling and, and mixing and eventually re-meeting in the centre here. So, yeah, not, not, the, not the greatest of moulding. Um... So that's those. Um, moving on to the C parts, which is the engine. Really nicely detailed. Really nicely detailed. Um, not quite as good as the Porsche, but um, you know the Porsche had all those. If you remember, it had all those veins on the cylinder heads. Um, these aren't. I mean, I don't know whether these do have got veins on, but they're not so pronounced. You've got some nice grill parts in here, which you know very well done. But again, there's flow lines in the plastic and through here. You know, weld lines on the plastic. It's not the end of the world, but um, it wouldn't take a lot to get rid of them. It really wouldn't. So uh, there's, there's flow lines through here, through here, through here. Um, yeah, not like I say, you, you're going to paint these parts anyway, so it really isn't the end of the world. I'm just being a bit picky. Um, let's move on to these parts. So these are definitely going to be shown. So the seat bucket looks really good. Um, kind of body body housing. Not sure which way up, probably this way up. So this will show. And again, there's lines through here, through here. Um, and also at the front here, there's some very distinct marks on here. So if you want a pristine finish on this, you're gonna have to spend time. You're gonna have to spend time on some of these, some of these moldings to get them perfect. I mean, they're not they're not that bad. I mean, once you've painted them, I doubt you'll see it, but they're certainly not perfect. Um, yeah, okay, so that's that one. And then this part, this looks like some exhaust components or some hoses. Um, can't recognise any of the other parts. These must all just be ancillary components that sit on the around the engine, etc. But uh, generally, doesn't look too bad. But again, you know, I can see I can see flow lines through virtually every single part. So that's not not very good, not very good moulding. 
you know when i when i compare what was on the what we saw on the porsche kit and bear in mind this is this is a very new kit you know this was only released last year these may be old tools actually i mean i'm, I'm maybe maybe they're you know some of these are sprues are old tools and they're just repurposing them into the new kit but um this version of the kit was released in 2022 and i would expect these kind of things to be you know really good but anyway okay so that's the first five or six sprues um that took us up to part obviously that was part e so let me just pop those to one side right picking up on so sorry i did get out of order i did the e parts on the last one so these are d parts and again same issue so again most parts will need painting but the, the moldings are really really good they're really clear there's no short short fills or anything obviously got some sort of fire extinguisher here um various roll cage assembly parts as a bulkhead um all looking really good i mean the, the detail with the rivets it looks fantastic it's just uh as i say just a shame that you won't be using any parts directly off the sprue um you can even see it through on the bottles here there's yeah it, it's just a flow line i mean i can't can't feel any ridges but yeah okay that's those parts um then we've got the chromed section now these look fantastic you've got textured finishes on the brake discs which look absolutely amazing and obviously with vented discs you put these two parts together you'll see the ribs in the center um chromed roll cage here i guess that's the roll hoop sitting on top of the car so this will be above the driver's head um and uh there's a set of trumpets here but I, they look like the same components as the the metal parts that were in here so look like a these were an afterthought so you've got the chrome parts through here which are the sort of trumpet air intakes to the engine but then you get these detailed um air funnels um yeah so maybe it's a choice one or the other if you want them really shiny you can use these if you want the metal parts you can use those i might be wrong so that's those um let me just move these out of the way um then on to sorry i can't remember which parts these are g parts a b c d f g down the bottom here so you can see the wishbones um got lovely detailed suspension on this uh, steering wheel in there uh, steering rack by the look of it um, various roll bars and things and linkages um, and these look like the hubs and i'll obviously the air intakes for the hubs and various bits and pieces so that molding actually looks so much better than the others in terms of the flow of the material it looks really good so yeah that's not too bad at all uh turning over oh let's just do these quickly so we've got some lighting comp um, glass components here i don't know where they go actually um so we've got uh, a couple of lenses maybe these are the dials i don't know what these parts are for maybe end of the wings or something there's uh there's some glass parts there but i mean they they look molded perfectly i'm not going to take them out of the packet small sprue of detailing don't know where any of those go but um there's a little sprue that's parts l and then over the page um h parts so here we've got various grills and radiators um and every single one of them i can see the flow line through them i'm sure it won't show when they're painted but it's just um just very very obvious on this kit um but uh detail i mean it, it look, does look really good it looks really good these are going to be quite tricky to paint obviously um you'll be spraying these i would suggest but you're going to have to make sure you get a good flow of paint into the the texture otherwise you will see that mark through um top of the rockers you can see ford written on there so that's nice detailing does look really good that does look really good so that's um forgive me h parts uh j parts which are these obviously the uh, wheel rims so we've got yeah the rear wheels here and then the front wheels um all, um, all six wheels there and then these uh, look like the uh, exhaust runs um yeah and there's yeah 
multiple parts going into a four-way back into the engine you can see there so I'm guess sorry I've got it around the wrong way so there'll be four, four branches coming out to each of these and then a single one running out the back of the car and then finally on the sprues there's uh, a number of linkages here again all suspension parts I would guess anti-roll bars either side right so that's the sprues um, let me just pop those away and then we'll have a look through the tyre bag. Uh, right, let's have a look at the tyres. Um, so, again, you've got Goodyear written around the tyre. And with a, you know, stamp into some white, that will look fantastic. A little bit of a seam running down the middle, but no issue with that. So, yeah, rear tyres look really good. Front tyres got a big moulding seam, um, which is a shame. Um, and again, Goodyear on the kit. Um, that's a good year on the uh, side wall um, there's some other writing there but I, it's too small for me there's something else on there um, then we've got some air ducting which is in the shape of a uh, well, they're giving you like a sort of coil spring there which does look which is going to look pretty good um, you know if I just pull it apart you can see what I mean it's, a, it's actually a spring but uh, actually a ducting and then a couple of suspension component bags it's, uh, that one's got shorter springs this is slightly longer springs in there uh, I'm guessing these are front suspension that's rear this has got four springs in this has got two um, got some hosing clear hose and we've got some thin lining and some thicker hose there so that's the that's the um, wheel bag. Uh, let's have a quick look at the decals. So I, I won't get these ones out because they're going to be the same as the smaller kit. But the seat belts are actually printed on fabric, which is nice. Got Williams harnesses on there. Um, and with the fabric, uh, we'll have a look at the um, photo etch parts. But it'll be the same as the Porsche where you build the seat belts up. So they actually uh, sit onto the uh, seat. So they're loose. You know, they're actually a loose belt. Uh, in terms of the livery, we've got the elf um, symbols in there, and uh, much the same as the other, the other kit. And I'm guessing on the back of this part here, it'll say the Goodyear. Um, but I won't, I won't open that one up. Um, and then let's have a look at the photo etch parts. So we have got in here all of the seatbelt components, um, and as I say, there is um, overprinting on these, so you can see the. On the seatbelt components, we've got the white printed on there. These are the end plates, I'm guessing, for the wings, again, with a white plate. And then on the on the discs, if I get the light on them, you can see that the vents have been marked on with the paint. And the grills here absolutely look fantastic, where they've been painted with the, uh, yeah, with the, um, the white paint. But um, they're going to be uh, very, 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 very fiddly to fit. But, I mean, they do look fantastic, so... That's really good. Yeah, so nicely presented. And as I say, you've got these trumpets in here as well for the air intake. I like the way that it's been put on here. Um, so, right, I'll just pop these back in the box and then let's have a look through the instructions. Right, let's review the 112 scale. So, um, standard Tyrrell P34. Um, looking at this just superficially, there's no option on the rear wing. So there's no Japanese spec on this. This is just the base car the six wheeler um, going through the instructions quite quickly so the details on the front are very similar to um, what's on the other on the uh, smaller car I won't go into too many details on that um, so walking through quickly we've got assembling the steering rack remember this car does have working steering uh, so we've got the steering rack in here uh, pedal box drops in um, detailing on the um, uh, fire uh, suppression system then underneath the car we drop on the floor pan and you can see I thought this was a bulkhead but it's not it fits underneath the car it's a nice bit of detail there then we've got it, um, the uh, reservoirs for the pedal boxes sitting on the B side of uh, the back surface of the uh, of the firewall and you can see the reservoirs there uh, sorry the master cylinder of the reservoir is what word I was looking for um, and then working down through the car this looks like the front suspension we're building up here um, with the double wishbone um, yeah you can see building dropping in the shocks to 
double shocks either side then lovely build up of assembly of the um, brake discs and you can see here you're adding your two chrome pieces to each other and then if you want to you can put your photo etch parts on the outside really nice and then these drop into the appropriate areas on the uh, on, on the assembly there um, then you've got your, your cooling ducts which I, sh I showed you the spring when we were going through the kit so that's going to look absolutely fantastic then dropping in your linkages back to the uh, the steering rack um, there's an anti-roll bar in here so all in all I'm just looking to see how you steer both sets of wheels there must be a, yeah there's a linkage here so there's a linkage through here so the wheels are linked together so you steer one set and the other set will follow so it is four wheel steer here's your steering wheel and your steering column set of dials there which look fantastic um, then dropping on the top of the body now this if you remember rightly in this molding i did see some sink marks and this is a visible part so there is some work to be done on here and again on the top here all of these parts are going to have to be painted because of the flash lines in them uh, got the chromed roll hoop drops in uh, this looks like probably the some sort of reservoir maybe even the uh, fuel tank by the look of it just sitting behind the bulkhead um, assembly in the engine very similar engine assembly um, to the other kit um, and then dropping the trumpets on um, transaxle assembly various components on there as you'd expect nice detail and then again you know the the exhaust you can see all the manifolds running into to one pipe uh, then assembly of the rear rear wheel housing rear suspension all drops in assemble the engine to the monocoque then construction of the radiators and cooling again with the photo etch parts that's going to look fantastic they drop onto the car um, anti-roll bars in then various ductwork pipe work assembly of your belts assembly of your wheels they drop into your obviously your your uh, seating position that drops into the car wheels bolt on um then assembly of your front rear wings then sort of the housing around the cockpit this is where the uh, the glass drops in you can see here i wonder where that glass went so there's a glass panel that drops in um front wing don't forget there were some sink marks in that front wing that are going to have to be dealt with um and then that drops on and then your livery however you wish to uh to decorate the car whether it's three or four um obviously only one wing option on here no driver um yeah i i guess for a big kit there's a lot of detail in here i'm not exactly overwhelmed with it um there's there's enough in here to make this into a project for multiple nights but i'll draw some conclusions in a little bit but i think you know it's a very different conclusion to i had with the porsche where i was kind of overwhelmed with the big kit and underwhelmed with the small kit this one I kind of feel that uh, the smaller kits overwhelmed me a little bit with the detail that's in there. Whereas this one is just kind of what I'd expect. And to be fair, for the additional money... Well, let me let me draw the conclusion at the end. Let me, let me finish doing the comparisons. Right, so let's just try and draw some conclusions by comparing the two instruction books. So I think the biggest thing, as I've said, is the, the smaller kit gives you options. So you can build either the straightforward P34 or you can build the... Uh, variant that ran at the Japanese Grand Prix with the larger wings and therefore use some more photo etch parts but uh, what I thought I'd do is just pick some of the the key parts so let's have a look at the engine build I don't think there's that much in it apart from the size you know they're very very similar kind of assemblies if you if you look here um, slide this over the top you know in terms of building the two engines they're very very similar um, the exhaust components are very similar you know there's a few ancillaries and things that uh, do give the larger kits some more detail but um, you know as a whole it's it, there's not there's not a massive amount different I'm just looking where the trumpets are um, yeah so I mean if you compare look at the assembly of the trumpets here on the larger kit it's very very similar there's not a lot in it at all um, um, as I say, the larger kit doesn't come with a driver. I, I mean, personally, I wouldn't put a driver in there, but, you know, some people like that. doesn't come with a driver. It doesn't come with a wing option. Um, and, yeah, all in all, you know, the, the smaller kit is 
it's very very detailed it's very detailed it's good i mean it doesn't have the working steering but i mean that's not the end of the world but things like you know the belt assembly you do have the detail in the belts you do have the detail in the wheels um and the molding actually on the smaller kit the actual quality of the molding was better i think it was better anyway um so yeah i uh I, I do think you know there's not a great deal in it in terms of the complexity obviously there's more parts on the larger kit there's a lot more sprues there's a lot more smaller components that do bring in the detail but overall the assembly is is kind of there i mean if i just bring in the photo etch parts for the smaller kit um and compare them with the photo etch parts on the larger kit you can see you know you've got You've got the optional end plates here, but you've also got the larger wing here. So you can see these plates. Um, you've also got, um, obviously, the grills, etc. here, but you've got those in the smaller kit as well. You've got this understructure for the larger wing um, on there. Um, obviously, the, the discs are a little bit more detailed here. You know, the discs stop short where they clip over the top of the moulding. But all in all... Um, yeah, the, the, the photo edge parts are very, very similar in their sort of um, uh, complexity. You can see the belts here and the belts here. So, yeah, not a lot to choose, actually. Um, let's just pick a few key components and compare. Yeah, so let's just have a quick look. Um, I mean, give you some idea of the size. This is a rear wheel off the smaller kit. This is off the bigger one. So, it's, yeah, it's a much, much bigger kit, obviously. Um, so if you want something that's really going to look the part, then the big kit's the one you're going to go for any day of the week. Um, but the, in terms of the buckets, I mean, you know, the moulding's very similar, just smaller. You can see here, um, these side panels, you can see the detail in there. So it's virtually the same where it wraps around. I didn't see any clear plastic in the um, in the smaller kit. Maybe I missed that. Um, but these, these are windows in the larger kit. Um, I'm guessing they're probably in there. Um, and then on the front wing, let's just have a look at this front wing here. You can see I did mention there's some sink here, but then you've got the same actually on the larger kit. You know, it's not much better in terms of the moulding, but you can get get some appreciation of the size difference between the two cars. Um, yeah, so what I'll do is I'm going to pop all this back in the box. There's not really much point in comparing all of the complexity of the parts because they're very similar in the way they, they they're assembled. Um, while I'm doing that, I'll have a think about how to draw this to a conclusion. Right, got them all back in the box now. Um, so, <laughs> after finishing the review and having looked through the two kits, there was something glaringly different in that this kit seemed far superior. So, I went back and uh, had a look back at my research into these two kits and I was wrong. So, this one is 22 kit indeed, but 22 in terms of a new box and new parts and the new parts i believe are only the trumpets for the air intake so this is actually a 2008 kit this one however is a 2022 kit uh with complete new parts and a redesign so this is the later kit uh, i said in the introduction the other way around so i got that wrong but anyway so drawing a conclusion um this kit i was blown away with this kit little bit underwhelmed with uh complete opposite to the the porsche um so the porsche uh, if you've seen that review uh there was a couple of sprues in the smaller kit there wasn't a lot of detail it was yeah it wasn't great and then when i got to the larger kit i was overwhelmed with the quality i only found one blemish in the parts um and just the general build and the complexity of the kit was just amazing um but i felt given the price, given the complexity, you, you know, I'm not sure it was who it was aimed for because it was kind of getting to the point where somebody who would get into that kind of detail would probably scratch build or or do something a little bit more unique. Um, but anyway, back to these kits. So looking at the larger kit to start with, most of the parts had some form of blemish on, so you're going to be painting a lot of parts in here. I don't think you could use any straight off the sprue, which is fine, because, I mean, that's the whole point in the kit. If you're doing it in detail, you know, then you will be painting them anyway. But a few of the parts may need some small filling as well. So there's a little bit of prep work on all of the parts in here. Uh, in terms of the detail, pretty good all the way through. Um, looked good. 
Um, you don't get the alternative wing, which you do in this kit. You don't get the driver. That's For me, that's not the end of the world. It's a nice big model. It's going to be a nice size. Um, and I think you'd be very pleased with it. It's a good kit. For the price, probably, you know, it's quite an expensive kit, really. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. This is probably... You know, you're going to spend a good few nights, if not a few weeks, building this, so that's great. However, let's come on to this kit. So, much cheaper, maybe getting on for maybe £100 cheaper. Um, the kit itself, I mean, the detail in it's fantastic. Multiple sprues, um, the photo etch parts, the general build, the fact that you've got the wing option and then the wing... Uh, being held on on the back here, you can see that there's a small picture here showing the, 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 the metal parts holding the wing. Absolutely fantastic. Really, really blown away by this kit. Uh, couldn't recommend it enough. Um, a couple of blemishes on the front wing, which, um, you know, sink marks where the uh, there's a rib underneath. But, the, the, you know, that will easily be filled out. Um, I think, you know, I mean, to be fair, either kit, you could get looking superb. Um... For presents, once it's built, um, if you've got the space, obviously this is going to have the shelf presents because of its size um, and its detailing. This, however, yeah, it's going to be a lovely little build to do. So, um, difficult one to say which to re recommend. Um, I probably would recommend either of them, uh, to be fair. Um, I think, um, you know, if you've got the... If you've got the time, you've got the money, you've got the space, go for the bigger one. If not, absolutely the little one. It's a fantastic kit. Um, really, really good. And I love the subject matter. I love the, the you know, this sort of legendary car. Um, you know, it's going to be a fantastic, uh, fantastic thing when it's built um, to put on display. So anyway, there you go. That's just a quick review of these two kits. I hope it was of interest to someone. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching. Um, I make these videos because it's just for me, really, because I enjoy doing it. Um, and I hope somebody out there enjoys watching them. So thanks again for watching.